For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have bore the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Today's devotion is Discoveries in the Desert. Let's not name the parable yet. That tends to close the door. Let's try entering the parable instead by first being last and last being first. This is certainly one of Jesus' sayings, but does it summarize the parable? Doesn't it seem tacked on? Deep as the saying is, doesn't it shortchange the parable's complexity? What about the doorway of generosity? If we enter where we don't feel, if we enter there, don't we feel a twinge? Isn't our first reaction somewhere between anger and perplexity? And why? It's the injustice, isn't it? It is apparent even if we don't know that a Daenerys a day was not overly generous. A peasant earning such a wage would never have been able to accumulate any surplus. Subsistence was all that could be hoped for. The allegory door might work. Let's say God is the householder and the parable illustrates God's grace to sinners. The kingdom, then, is not based on rewards. We are all equal in invitation, so we do not have to be equal in justice. While true, this perspective seems too mechanical and abstract, doesn't it? Perhaps the door we should enter is by asking where our sympathy lies. Let's try this and then come back to the parable another time. Let's just let it simmer there for a few days. I invite you to think on this reading during our devotional time and take time to dive into the scripture and read once again Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 through 16. Before we go, let us pray. Dear Lord God, creator of the universe, creator of parables, and creator spirit, create within us the wonder to open the door to your kingdom. We lift up these things in prayer as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.